This is Inside Town Hall, a behind the scenes look at city government and the issues affecting you and your family. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Inside Town Hall. I'm your host, Madeline Shields. Every few months, we invite uh, four city councilors in to have a roundtable discussion. And joining us this time is Kenny Anderson, Jr., Rex Rolfing, Michelle Erpenbach, and Greg Jamison. Thanks for joining us. Let's go around the table. Introduce yourself uh, for folks who may not be familiar who our city councilors are. I'm Kenny Anderson, Jr. I represent the Northeast District of Sioux Falls. And when I ran for city council the first time, I ran for reasons of wanting to be part of the growth of this city. Uh, as a lifelong citizen, I wanted to see this city continue along the path it's going, and I wanted to be part of that. And I'm Rex Rolfing. I'm a, a city councilor at large, meaning I represent the entire city of Sioux Falls. Uh, I spent about 40 years in the financial services industry here in Sioux Falls. And most of my life here and like Kenny I want to be a service I want to be a servant if you will uh, to help Sioux Falls continue to um, outpace and and grow the way it uh, way way it is now and uh, to continue to do so cool. I'm Michelle Erpenbach I'm the uh, council representative for the central district that's downtown and then all the way down to Lincoln High School east to the the interstate and west to about Western Avenue up to 10th Street or so um, big part of the central part of the community uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that I started um, considering running for council five years ago was that, that I was involved with the community gardens here in town and I was on the park board. And it was one of those lessons that I learned, as we all have over time, that one person working really hard and bringing together friends and volunteers can have a, make a huge impact in the life that we live in Sioux Falls and I learned a lot about city hall and city government and I just wanted to take it to the next level and and as Rex said it's that public service piece that's really important to so many of us and, and me included. Uh, Greg Jamison I represent the southwest district of the city of Sioux Falls so that's like at 26th and Western everything's southwest of there mm -hmm. generally. I was elected in 2008 re-elected in 2012 for me, my uh, aha moment was when I was at home, my kids had graduated from high school, and I'm sitting there watching CSI, <clears throat> and I'm thinking, my wife's off playing tennis someplace, and I'm like, wait a minute, is this as good as it gets? Is this what I'm going to do now for my evenings? And so I was looking for something else to do, something more to do in my life, and uh, at the time, my dad was on the city council, representing the same district. And him and I had, had lots of conversations about the city and what's going on and how things worked and it was always interesting to me and it seemed like a natural fit and that was really uh, how I got started. It all started with CSI. <laughs> <laughs> was not my it was one of those moments you're sitting there and you're going, wait a minute, this is it? Yeah. This is what I'm going to do with my evenings? And I said, well, I can't do that. Yeah. I could have gone, I suppose, to a lot of other directions, but I decided to uh, go to the city council. That's I've enjoyed cool. it. That's really cool. Well, later in the program, we will talk about uh, there will be open seats on the Sioux Falls City Council, and uh, we'll give you information on how, if you're interested in running for office, what goes into it, and we're going to talk about that later. But let's move on. Let's talk about what many people have been talking about, and not just over the last few months, but for many, many years in Sioux Falls, and that is the Indoor Aquatic Center. Um, it has gone to vote. It has passed. Um, the plans are to build it at Spellerberg Park. Um, whether folks are happy with that or dissatisfied with that, let's talk about the citizen committee <coughs> and what's the timeline and what can we expect. Well, uh, you know, I think that, it, that it's important to note that that vote was pretty overwhelming. You know, um, that this community really does support not only an indoor pool, but they support an indoor pool at that location. Um, Councilor Karski and I are involved in that have been involved in kind of an advisory group and now I'm involved with a citizens group that um, will kind of walk alongside the architects and city staff in terms of what is it going to look like and how, what's the accessibility like and is it, is it going to work in terms of you know how the community wants to use the building and, and those sorts of things. So Let's talk a little bit about that okay. uh, funding change. Well, um, I guess I'll take that. Everybody's looking here. Um, as you know, it was a $19.8 million project, uh, uh, proposed project, when it went to the voters. Um, and, I, and I'm going to comment a little bit on that. Um, even though the, the uh, 
the vote or the petition, whatever you want to call it, um, was to not build an, uh, or to build a, a outdoor pool there that went down. In all essence, it was a vote, in my opinion anyway, to um, emphasize and to uh, say that <coughs> we wanted the pool, we wanted an indoor pool, and we wanted it at that location. That was inferred, I think, by the 70%, I, I believe it was, that well, went and, on and that. and council had already voted. We yeah. had already said that's where it, what was going to happen. That's right. So, I, so, you know, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. So the budget was 19.8. Well, uh, obviously, that was, uh, that was to go ahead and, and do that kind of thing. They had not spent a lot of money, the, the developers, the architects, et cetera, uh, and the people who were going to make the decision what kind of building we had, had not gone ahead and really looked at quality of uh, products, uh, quality of uh, how many, how many uh, amenities we had inside of it, et cetera, et cetera. It was a basic draft uh, um, that we, we didn't want to spend a couple million dollars or whatever on architects without knowing it was going to go through. So once they started doing this, they found out that to, to get the quality of building that we wanted and that the people of Sioux Falls deserved, it's going to cost a little bit more. Uh, to do uh, things like the uh, therapy pool, which we think is a great, is a big thing. Diving boards, uh, uh, the seating for 500. We think it's important to have those things. And one of the things that they told us was they went to one building that was just, what, over 10 years old and already rust was all over the place. We don't want to have that kind of building that we're going to have to 10 years from now look at redoing because we didn't build quality in the first place. So to do that, what, what they need is about $4 million more and it's not going to be, we're not going to borrow the money, we're going to delay a few projects and we've saved some money over the last year or two and uh, we'll be able to make that up so that the people of Sioux Falls are not going more in debt to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the Citizens Committee. How was that, how were the folks picked for the Citizens Committee and what are some of the things that they will be helping to decide or to choose? Once again, I think that Michelle should speak on this because she was part of that committee and I think knows a little bit, has more insight towards that. You know, I guess um, to a certain extent, yeah, that um, it, it's a project that is not unlike the event center in terms of the mayor's and his team had a, sort of an advisory group that walked alongside him during all that process. That was going on as well during this this process with, you know, not only should we have an election about the pool, how, how should that go, those sorts of things. Um, but now the, the mayor and his staff have chosen, really it's a group of citizens. I just happen to be on it, partly because I lived in that neighborhood for a number of years, and partly because I do represent, you know, a big chunk of those folks that live in that neighborhood. And so um, I think they were chosen basically based on interest, you know, based on the idea that that they wanted to have input in, in this project, you know, and um, it really is going to be j that advisory role that looking at it, as I said the other day to someone that this is going to, each of us is going to come into that room with a different perspective on what this pool should be like. One of the things that I'm going to be looking for is accessibility, especially for that year-round use. You know, that's a really popular park. It's right there in that neighborhood and folks are there year-round and so let's make sure that they can get into that building if, you know, if they're sledding or whatever, that that's that's easily accessible, that parking is good, and um, those kinds of things. So each of us is going to come in with a different perspective, and it is just a group of citizens that are involved with that. And part of that is when you're talking about accessibility, uh, there's the sledding hill there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're talking about accessibility, people could go in and warm up and have mm -hmm. a warming house. Um, they may have concessions there. Are those mm -hmm. kind of the things that you're looking at? Um, mm -hmm. And when folks are talking about a swimming pool, there's also going to be some meeting rooms, um, places for birthday parties. Do you envision this as a community center as well as a swimming pool? You know, I guess speaking for me, I, I can't speak for the council, but I would say yes. I think we're going to see that become more of a community center because there will be concessions there. There will be multi-purpose rooms there. One of the things that staff found as they traveled around studying these different buildings was that those those indoor aquatic centers were really used by the neighborhoods and used by community groups as way more than than I expected. And I I think that's a great use of that building. Let's not have it just be for swimming or swim meets or therapy or whatever. Let's do, let's use it for as many things as possible. Let me comment on that too, because I know there'll be a concern. Well, how big is the footprint going to get of that building? Is it going to take up mo much more, 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 more space? Right. And no, it will not. It was a little bit more by redesigning some things with the things that they found out on these trips. And, uh, you know, Michelle uh, mentioned that the community use, community type room, uh, uh, birthday room uh, is part of it now. 
and that's a small small increase to the to the footprint, but it'll make that uh, facility much more usable year round. When you talk about the trips, is that a group of folks going and looking at other aquatic centers in other cities? That was staff yeah. that okay. did that, staff and that did. that's how we came down to the new numbers that we okay. that we're looking at it with council now. Is is that they really did then? more research and, and, and did some additions, as, and mm -hmm. as Rex said, looked at quality of products, even just the way that the building is built. Well, let's move on and talk about the 2015 legislative session. Um, there are lots of things that go on in PEER, and I know that many of you travel the PEER, you, you um, research bills and keep up on bills. What's going on right now that is of interest to the city of Sioux Falls? Well, I guess I can start on that. Uh, I was one of the counselors that went up there, and it actually was uh, one of my first times going with the city council. Uh, I was very impressed with uh, the committee meetings and the different subjects that they had up there and, and the public input that was uh, very evident in each meeting. Uh, the, some of the things that the city was interested in, uh, there was a TIF bill uh, brought up uh, by the counties that uh, basically after having some discussions with some of the county commissioners uh, they just stated that they wanted to have a little input in when a, 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 excuse me municipalities do these TIFs they feel that they were not uh, involved in them even though they are a partner in these TIFs and uh, basically through their frustrations uh, came up with this bill. But I think uh, the one good thing the bill will do, which right now it doesn't look like it's going to go too far, but I think it opens up those discussion routes between the cities and the counties, and especially those that are really affected uh, by TIF, to be able to find new ways to either do the TIFs or just to at least open up those line of communications. And if, and if people don't know what uh, TIF is, it's tax increment financing, and it's an incentive um, for developers to take building or land that has not been used for a purpose. Either blighted or it's also available for economic development, um, and it is. It's an incentive for development. Right. It's a tax incentive for developers. Right. Okay. Just so we're clear and mm -hmm. people understand what we're talking it's about. It's not a it's not a, a gift. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, incremental financing, and so there's a significant difference there. Mm -hmm. Now, when you asked about why the city council goes to Pier, mm -hmm. and the, the, one of the main purposes is that there's a lot of things that happen in Pier that change the authorities of municipalities. So the city government has rules and regulations that we have to follow. We want to go to make sure that if the legislature is passing something new that maybe takes away our authority or adds a burden to us without funding uh, or changes the rules. We want to be there and we want to watch it and make sure that, that uh, we're a part of that discussion. And for the public, the opportunity for them and the reason they should be involved is because it can impact the way that they live in our community. And so they should be watching what the state is doing. The opportunities for the citizens to get involved are when legislators come back to Sioux Falls or other communities to do these cracker barrels, they call them, on Saturdays. And, and those times are available, I think if anybody searched around they'd find them, but they can come then and ask questions of the legislators and ask why are they thinking this way or, or what's wrong with this approach or something to that effect, but they have a chance to get involved and engaged and uh, they really should. Let me give you a real life, uh, a real life idea or, or uh, example of what Greg was just talking about. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 135 is a third penny infrastructure bill that allows cities to um, vote on, the people in the city to vote on a uh, one cent increase in their sales tax for only a certain amount of time, has to sunset, for a certain project. Um, and then again, as I said, the people have to, have to vote on it. The individual uh, communities have to vote on it. That bill has never had, uh, in probably three, four years I've been going up there, and I've been going up there a lot longer than that, has never gained any traction, never even basically got uh, anywhere close to being out of committee. This year, because of the, of the I won't say lobbying, but the information we have been giving people, um, the legislators, it passed out of the Senate uh, Commerce Committee, I believe it was, um, seven to two. 
and will and it's headed to the floor and we are very excited about that and i know the state has some some concerns about it but we added an amendment that uh, hopefully took care of some of those and what this would do would be an, allow a city such as a, um, let me a small town where my wife is from clark um, a lot of cities uh, don't have um, uh, paved roads all the time they've got gravel or something like that they need a new road or road grader well a road grader in a, in a small town is a huge expense just a huge expense and if you raise the property value if you do an opt-out to go property probably that's going to stay on there. This way we can do a sales tax where all the people using that, using that are, going to, are going to benefit from it and we know it's going off. Once the motor grader is paid for, that tax is going off and you're back to the four cents or the two cent uh, addition. So it makes, makes perfect sense for people to, um, to have this, for us to be able to do this and it gives us a little uh, local rule, local mm -hmm. uh, authority. And what's interesting is that what might be great for Clark could also be great for Sioux Falls. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And that's one of the things in the notes uh, I received was that, you know, with the South Dakota Municipal League, it doesn't matter the size. Mm -hmm. You may all have the same topic right. that mm -hmm. you need addressed. There were 99 cities that signed on to that bill, supporting that <coughs> bill in the, through the Municipal League. What are there, 130 cities or something like that in the state of South Dakota? Mm -hmm. You know, a vast majority of them would like to have this authority only given to them by the public uh, mm -hmm. via a vote, but have the ability to do this in case they, they need it. If this passes and goes through and it, it would be approved, it would go to the citizens' vote, then would they vote every time on that tax? Individual, yep. Individual tax for yep. that one item or yep. mm -hmm. And let's just say for some reason the tax, um, um, amount of money coming in from that sales tax didn't cover the cost that they, had pre they presumed it would, they would again have to go through the whole process and get the people to vote again after it's sunsetted saying, yep, we'll go ahead and do that, or no, we gotta find another way to pay for that. Okay. A lot of safeguards. There are other bills, um, House Bill 1106. This is a little confusing. It has to do with permits, um, liquor licenses. Explain a little bit about what that bill is and what it could do. Greg, you wanna take that or you want me to? No, I'm not sure of that one. Okay, um, what this one does is there's a, there was a um, Supreme Court uh, decision uh, uh, called Hansen versus uh, Minneapolis County. One of our county commissioners went out and got some information on, I believe it was a, a conditional use permit, and did his due diligence by going out, taking a look at the property, talking to some people, et cetera, et cetera. Well, um, this was uh, brought back to, uh, to the people, uh, to the commission, and to the courts that um, he got additional information that the other, other ones did not, the other county commissioners did not. And therefore he uh, was excluded from voting on this, even though he was just doing his due, dil due diligence like we all like to do. Um, so what this did is said, anything having to do with permits or licensing, every piece of information that we get has to come before the group in an open forum. So we can't go out and talk to individuals about what they think and why and that kind of thing. It's got to all be done in front of everybody. Um, uh, House Bill 1160, 1106 would at least fix it so it was just on licenses and permits, uh, what they call quasi-judicial um, uh, ideas or, or ordinances, whatever, and um, would not be able to extend it to other, extend it to other uh, pieces of information or, or voting that we do. So to make it simple, if you're an elected official and you want more information on a, a conditional use permit or a liquor license, you could actually go out, look at the property, see what it's about, find out some more information on your own time without restriction. We what, used to be able right, to do that. The reality is we, we, many of us do that all the time and Commissioner Kelly was just doing what an elected official normally does. This <coughs> isn't something that he did that was wrong. But it was something that because he had additional information, it gave those the people that wanted that permit, it gave them traction and they did they sued the county. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's come down to is that in our researching, we're being squelched by the Supreme Court in terms of no, you can't have any extra information and those sorts of things all have to come to a public meeting and we've been seeing it in the last couple of weeks especially. Increase the amount yeah. of time that we spend in, in meetings again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, those are uh, topics. I'm sure that won't be going away anytime soon, and it's something that we will learn more about. Well, as we want them to vote yes on, on 1106. And then so. it'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't go away. We're stuck with what we've got now, but it won't be extended mm -hmm. to other areas where we mm -hmm. won't be able to do that, right. such as zoning, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, at this time, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the 2016 election and what we all love, spring construction. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Dr. Justin Clem, and I'm here today to talk about the influenza virus. As this graph from the South Dakota Department of Health shows, influenza is clearly on the rise in South Dakota, and we don't expect that to slow down anytime soon. We can also see that the virus has caused dozens of hospitalizations and sadly has even claimed South Dakotan lives so far this season. It's not too late to get immunized and I strongly encourage you to discuss this with your healthcare professional. Welcome back to Inside Town Hall where we are having a discussion with four city councilors. It's our roundtable discussion we do about once every three months and let's talk about spring construction. Um, we always have construction, and we know that's going into the summer season here in South Dakota. Uh, we have big projects coming up. Let's talk a little bit about uh, 12th Street. Well, one of the largest projects uh, that the city had uh, scheduled for 12 or for 2015 was the 12th Street Bridge, which would be a little to the west of Grange Avenue and 12th Street. Um, the project was budgeted for $8.3 million. Uh, and then we did uh, bid the project out. Unfortunately, we got no bids. And that's very unique in our city. I, I'm, I don't know if I can remember another project that we had zero bids. Uh, basically, the impact is that uh, the bridge builders in our region here have already scheduled their projects and uh, we're pretty well uh, at capacity. So our public works department, taking a look at this, has decided to do some of the base of this project to shorten up the project and then hopefully we'll bid it out again next year and then, then it will only be just building the bridge. So hopefully that will maybe even save us a little money, but in the, pro in the meantime there's other projects that are waiting that I feel they'll move it forward and one of the other counselors might be able to speak to those also. Well, if I could add on 12th Street Bridge, you know, part of the issue there is that it's over an active rail line. That's a problem. Nobody, nobody really wants to have that risk. The other problem is there's no staging area for you to, to build a part of the bridge and then store all your equipment because of the residential uh, development that's around it. So it's complicated. Not everybody can bid on it. It isn't just an average bridge. So I think that added to the impact of not having bidders. Other projects, if I could. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Cliff Avenue. Cliff Avenue was really the showcase project for 2015. It's going to widen that road all the way from, I think it's uh, 67th or so, all the way to 85th. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of traffic that goes on that road from Harrisburg into, into our city and back. And uh, that project is going to get started. They're already working on some of the utility work. Yep. And uh, that's a major improvement. It's a major expense, uh, major new arterial. So a great improvement for our community. It's a two lane right now, is that correct? Right. And it'll go to five lanes. <coughs> right. Okay. Yep. And the nice thing about it is, is that recently the city council just annexed in uh, some uh, University of Sioux Falls property just to the south of the 85th intersection and I think you're going to see uh, with that uh, street expansion that you're going to see a, a boom in growth down in that area also. Along with 85th Street being, in, being uh, upgraded to the west of that all the way over to where the new Walmart will go on Minnesota Avenue. So that's going to make another way for people to get over there without having to go you know, through 57th or 69th, they'll go to they can go to 85th all the way down Cliff that way too. So it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. The other areas that that they're going to do because of the the I think it's about 1.1 million of the 8.3 that um, that they're going to do with the this uh, pre preparatory work uh, uh, under 12th Street is 
our uh, 11th and 2nd downtown by the old uh, Midland building. 22nd Minnesota, which has been in need of uh, refurbishing for years, and I think people would agree. And then Solberg Avenue between uh, 49th Street and, uh, and 57th Street to give people another way to get into uh, the Western Mall coming off the Solberg, or the mall rather, uh, Empire Mall, off of uh, the Solberg overpass of uh, 229. And when we're talking about that area, that's over by the Good, Good Sam National Campus. There's a lot of industry out there, and, and traffic mm -hmm. There's a lot does of, yeah. back up um, mm -hmm. there. Very much so. Uh, that will create another arterial street for folks to get into town and to go around. Yep, down, um, to, 49th down to 49th and go either way or go straight into the, into the mall. Okay, all right. Well, we can always expect road construction, mm -hmm. but they always say that's progress, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, let's talk about the city council elections that are coming up in 2016. Uh, there are four city council seats up for election, mm -hmm. and three are being vacated completely. Is that mm -hmm. correct? That is correct? We're term limited to two terms, and two four-year terms, and Councilor Jamison and Councilor Anderson are, are both uh, uh, leaving us at the end of their eight years in April of 2016. So uh, it's one of those things that we've all, we talked earlier about why we ran for city council, and I think that it's important for folks to understand that there are some real opportunities coming. And, and the people who watch this kind of programming are the people that are most involved with this. And I just, my encouragement is that I want people to think about it ahead of time. I want think of people to think about it, plan for it. Because the things that we'll be discussing over the next few months are going to be the campaign issues for the 2016 campaign. We're going to talk the 2016 budget. We're going to do all kinds of, all these construction projects we're talking about. Everything we're going to be working on the next few months will be campaign topics in 2016. It's important to start thinking about it. That's right. What are some of the requirements, I guess, to be a city well, look councilor? At us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, registered voter, a resident of the city of Sioux Falls. I don't know that there's an age limit, but uh, that's really it. And an interest to serve. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we talk about it's, you know, here February or so, a year ahead of time before the election would be in April of 16. Uh, it takes you time to get caught up, mm -hmm. figure out the budget, the process. Uh, get involved, understand the issues, because uh, uh, you, you shouldn't jump in at the last minute. Mm -mm. You really need to be tuned up, because when and if you do get elected, you've got to go. And there's issues that you're going to have to know about from a previous history, and you, and you should. And I've had people approach me. I'm one of those guys who's leaving in 2016 after eight years, and they've asked about uh, getting involved and what it really means. And, and, and you shouldn't step in not knowing what it entails, because there's a lot more than just our meetings on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. So there's a time commitment, an understanding that it's, that it's real. That's a part-time position, but depending on your involvement and your interest, you can really elevate your uh, involvement. So I want to have a conversation. And anybody who's interested in the Southwest District, uh, feel free to call me, and I'd love to have a conversation with you about uh, what it really takes to be a council member. Well, I've, I've done this show for many years and interviewed many people who are new counselors and, and uh, the ones that have finished their term. And I, th I think it was Sue Aguilar that said she learned more about sewers than she ever <laughs> thought she would ever know about sewers. So you learn a lot. Yeah. You, yeah. Would you say you learned more than what you expected? I mean, did you know what, was, what you were facing? No, no. I don't think yeah. anybody can be prepared that, that, that prepared for it. Um, the in-depth uh, amount of information that you get, and uh, by doing a little bit of digging, you get uh, you get more information than you sometimes you ever want to know. You know. But I think it's important to understand that, I mean, I jokingly say look at us, but that's the point is that City Council really represents the community. We really are a cross-section of the community. We're young, old, we're men, women, we're some of us professionals, some retired, some I of want, us I doing... I which one you're calling old. <laughs> No one that I know. Oh, okay. But but the point is, it's we. I want it to be as easy for anyone to run as possible. And yes. and I'm with Greg. If you know, if you're interested in it, give me a call. Or you know, let's have coffee and let's talk about what it really means. And and really, the not only the rewards, but some of the heartaches that yeah. go with it. It's it is. It's a lot of time. It's a big commitment. And you know, you do. You learn a ton. Well, thank you all for joining us for Inside Town Hall. That's our time today. If you want more information from our city councilors or if you want to contact them, go to SiouxFalls.org. You can find out all you need to know about what's going on in the city of Sioux Falls. Thanks for watching.